part, the variation of principle, the second variation of principle. So again, here is our the integrate form, integrate form of the original differential equation. So we have the in the body and in the boundary condition. So for the variation of principle, so first we construct a scalar quantity. We call it the, the, the big pi. So we call it a function, a function. So so we construct this is a scalar. Okay, it's a it's a scalar quantity. So it's scalar. So which means it's a, it's like the energy, like your weight, like the height. So it's a scalar function. So so we call it functional, and uh, in this functional we have the unknown u, and we have the f big f and big e are the differential operator. So then the solution of the original problem is to find a u, to make the function, function stationary, with respect to the arbitrary changes. So, so this is called variation. So which means, if we give an arbitrary change dot u and then is the, this equation is still equal to zero. Okay, so this is used as a basis to construct the finite element solutions. Okay, so so for this method, the key step or the the very very important part, uh, part is to to construct the the function. So if we manage to construct the function. And then the following will be very easy. So let's first let's introduce some operator. So this is the some basic concept. Otherwise, you will not know how to how to work out the function. So first is the definition for linear operator. So for a differential equation like this, it's a differential equation. So we have L is the operator. And u is the unknowing, and b is uh, another parameter. So, so if the differential operator l have has the following features, then this operator is called a linear operator. So, so these are the condition. If they met, if they meet, or met this condition, then we say this operator is a linear operator. So, what are the condition? So, l, and then we have this. Uh, Term, this term, this function. Then, if they equal to l alpha u one plus l beta u one, so which means if we do the sum and then we do the operator equal to we do the operator, we do the operation or the the for each terms and then we do the summation. If they equal, then we say l is the linear operator. And here we here we we we. We we put the the coefficient alpha up after the operation. So then L is a is a linear operator. So so where the alpha and beta are two constants. So for example, d d alpha u one plus beta u two d x. So d d x is an operator. So we want to say. We we say this is a linear operator. So because it's a linear operator, which means we can we can do the operation on those term first, and then we do the plus. Okay, because it's a linear operator, and then we can do the do the differential with respect to the parameter. Then we times the the the, the coefficient alpha and the beta. So because it, because it's a linear operator, that's why we can write as this. Okay. Second definition. So this is more important. This is called the self-adjoint operator. Self-adjoint operator. So if we integrate the inner product of L and the arbitrary function by parts, so we have the the L and the arbitrary function v. So if we do the integration by parts, so which means we we do. We we you see here we swap, we swap the position of u and the v. Okay. So 
solve the the position of U and V, and then we have another uh, we have another operator. So we 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 write as L star. So L star is called a adjoint operator. So this is the definition for the adjoint operator. So if they match this condition, then the operator is called self adjoint operator. So what condition? So if they match L star equal to L, so which means here L star equal to L, which means we can manage to swap the position, and then it is uh, uh, the condition we can do this is we can swap the two parameters. Okay. So for example, let's say whether it is a self or the joint operator or not. So so by checking this, the condition to check this is to say if we can manage to swap the two positions. So let's prove or let's have a look here, these examples. So this is our differential operator. So LU, then LU equals to this one. So we want to prove, we want to say if we can manage to swap this, the position of u and v, okay, then we do what we do. We use the mathematics. So we do the integration by parts. We do the integration by parts, and then we get this. And then again, we for this this form, we for this term, we again we do the the integration by parts. Then we get this format. So we. And then these are the boundary conditions, boundary conditions, so, so, we, so we can put the boundary values into those. So here we can say we have managed to swap u and v. So here u is here, v is here, but here uh, u is here, v is here. So which means we have managed to swap these two. And then which means l star equals to l. So which means l, this is a self adjoint operator. It is a self adjoint operator, which means this format. This differential operator is a self adjoint operator, which means you, when we do this integration, we can swap these two and then to do the uh, to do the integration, they are equivalent. Okay, so after we we have the definition for the linear operator and the self adjoint uh, operator, then we can have a look how we construct the function or we construct the function. We said the functional is the key is the key for the variation of principal method. So again, we have the differential equation a u equals to zero, b u equals to zero. Okay, and uh, the equivalent Kalaji method. We take the equivalent Kalaji method. We said for the Kalaji method, we we pick the weighted function as this. We pick the weighted function as this, and then here this is a u. This is BU, okay, we just replace AU with the exact format. And then we use the property of the linear self adjoint operator. So we said L is a self, is a linear self adjoint operator. Then we can we can make some change to this form to this term. So we have this term delta U T L U D omega. So then because it's a linear self adjoint operator, so we can do like this. So we do uh, half half of them. Okay, that's no problem of this. That's half and half minus. <coughs> and then let's have a look. We see here, this is the, let's put the mark here. And then we say here, we say because this is a self adjoint operator, so we can swap this with this. So we make this here and this here. We swap the position. And for the first term, we keep it the same. Okay. And then we after we swap, we need to have an additional boundary condition part. And then we have the we have this. Okay. So. Uh, and then furthermore, we do what we do. We keep the same for this part. And for this part, because it's a linear operator, so which means we can, we can for this 
we can do the differential and then we do the delta. Okay, we, so we can put the delta outside the differential operator. And then we can say this part we can write as this. Okay, we can write as this. And the bounding condition we keep it as the same. Okay, so which means for this, for the first part, we have managed to to move the delta. Okay, move the delta to the, to here. Okay, to here. This is an important step. And then after we move to here, then we can have the fun uh, variation principle. So which means we can move the delta here, and then other format is our function. Other format is our function. And here our function we, we work out is in this form, in this format. So what this is for the general format. So this is for the general. So which means for a specific question, you can use this formula to work out the uh, the variation, to work out the variation, and then to go further uh, for other steps. Okay, let's have a look some examples. So the so and he, similar to the similar to the to, to the weighted residual method here we have different specific method for the variation of principle. So here we first we introduce the reads method. So so for the reads method, they define the approximate solution to unknown fun function can be characterized by trial function with parameters. Okay. So the approximate solution, and this is the the risk method. The the the, the approximate solution is by the trial function. We said this is the 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 the, the solution we guessed, and so we we call it the trial function. Trial function, and with the parameter here, a i is the parameter, n i is the shape function, and then we have the the function. So then we construct the function, and then the function equals to zero. Then we mean, which means we have many many equations. Uh, depends on how many unknown coefficients we set up, and then we can have uh, um, different numbers, different number of the equations. And here, because this is arbitrary, so we which means we lose equal to zero. So you can some people, some students they can say. This equal to make loss equal to zero, which means we make the function of function big pi equal to 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 the stationer or to minimum. So have a look at the example. Then you will be uh, much clearer. Then the the the, the 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 step is much clearer. So we have the original differential equation here, and then we have the boundary condition here. Okay, then. For what we said for this method, for the variation of principle method, first is to construct the function, and we said we can, we have obtained the general formula formulation for the function, function. So you can use the formula to construct your function for the specific, for the sp specific problems. So here we 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 have the specific function for these problems. So this is also for you to practice after the lecture. If you cannot manage to do this, please let me know. We can answer together. And then the second is so we choose the trial function. That means we we we, we guess what is uh, a bit the format for our answers. So we choose Always we we want to because we have the boundary condition, so it will be much easier if we our trial function automatically match the trial function, the boundary conditions. So we have this trial function. We have the advantage of pick this form because it automatically meets the boundary conditions, and then we can we don't need to consider the boundary condition in our procedures or in our solutions. So. By using this trial function, we put this trial function into the function. Then, the exact format for our function will be like this. We can say in this function, 
the old the unknowing is the coefficient a1 a1 is the only unknowing now we need to solve this unknowing so we take partial pi partial ai equal to zero and then we have the equation and then we solve it we get a1 okay then after we know the a1 then we have the, the exact format for the trial function that is the solution for the original differential equation so this is the simplest case because we already have one parameter we already have one unknowing coefficient and then we can move to more complex case we have two unknowing coefficients so for two unknowing coefficients similarly we first we we need to work out the functional so this is our, our functional but here before we work out the functional because we pick this so we have to 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 check the boundary condition to check the boundary condition because that is automatically match so we have we need to check the boundary condition so after we put into the boundary condition we can actually we can remove one parameter or we can use one one unknowing to to express another unknowing so which means we manage to reduce the two unknowing into one unknowing because we can use the boundary the, the, the boundary conditions then we have the our functional our functional and then here so we need to solve the unknowing coefficient a1 and then partial of pi we said we want to make this minimum or the stationer find the stationer for this uh, function so we, we partial big pi partial a1 equal to zero and then we get a1 equal to this format and then we get the approximate uh, solution for the original differential equation okay so this is the reads method the reads method to solve the differential equation okay and it's a uh, part of the variational principle method and uh, you can do more practice in the textbook or in some other books to be familiar with the procedure so part 2.2 .2 is the principle of the virtual work principle of virtual work this is part of the variational principle methods so the definition in